and welcome. This is View from the Top. I am Modili Sharafaisu. Eight years after the financial crisis, regulation still occupies retail banking executives' time and resources. Thankfully, bankers no longer feel overwhelmed by constantly shifting rules, but banks need to continue to build trust. Customers want seamless service on their tables and smartphones in real time at low or no cost at all. Fewer people are visiting branches and what they do and when they do, it is not for basic transactions. Behavior and technology now drive strategic thinking with expensive, painful implications for physical networks and staff numbers. Experts say business models and the economics of banking will be turned upside down by 2020. One of those experts said recently, and I quote, implementing change is often hampered by fixed views and antiquated equipment. Yet. Even traditional banks can rework their thinking, their networks, and their service proposition. They can even profit from it, just like real bankers should. Wema Bank recently celebrated her 70 years of existence as a banking organization in Nigeria. It is the longest surviving and the most resilient indigenous Nigerian bank, having been established in May 1945 as a private liability company with the name Agboma Bay Bank Limited. In April 1987, Wema Bank was transformed from a private liability company to a PLC and was listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange in 1990. So how does a 70-year-old bank stay young and keep up with the times? That's exactly what Wema Bank has been trying to do and its managing director joins us on View from the Top today. I want to welcome Mr. Shegun Oloke to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lukiti, for joining us. Thank you, Madele. Here's a quick bio of Mr. Olukitui before our conversation. Born in September 1958, Mr. Shagun Olukitui is a graduate of chemistry from the University of Lagos. He's also an MBA alumnus of the Lagos Business School and the Advanced Management Program of INSEAD France. He started out in 1985 as an auditor with the then Akintola Williams & Co. Chartered Accountants. In his long banking career, he has been the acting managing director of Bond Bank PLC and an executive director of finance and enterprise risk management of Sky Bank PLC before his appointment as the managing director, chief executive officer of Wema Bank PLC, a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria and member of the Institute of Directors, Mr. Olukitui is a 2007 recipient of the Distinguished Alumni Merit Award of the University of Lagos. Uh, the wave of technology sweeping through the financial services industry is approaching uh, in a critical stage. What does the digital revolution mean for the industry and indeed uh, for the broader economy? For our business, um, I think margins are thinning out. Uh, people are also looking for an easier way to transfer business. Um, what technology has done for banking actually is to position services uh, that we used to give from brick and mortar locations in the past, right in the hands of customers. Uh, what that has done essentially is lower the cost to serve. It also has been able to give a lot of convenience to customers. Um, a lot of us Banks today, we're doing a whole lot more than we used to do in the retail banking space, consumer, consumer banking, so to speak. Um, a typical cu customer really wants to stay in the comfort of his office, home, in his car, to transact business uh, without necessarily having to drive some distance to a, a banking branch, a bank branch to go do the business. So. Really, the revolution that is happening in other spheres of life. So, banking is no exception. And in fact, the entire life that we live today has, is, gone, is going digital, so to speak. So, for banking in Nigeria, particularly, I think a lot had happened in the, in the digital space. Um, payment system, for, uh, particularly, has really been revolutionized. Uh, today, we have a product called BoxMe. Uh, B U X M E. It's a funds transfer product that all I need is your phone number or your email, uh, email account. 
uh, with an email account with a phone number, I'll get the mo money to you. Uh, you get some information on your email or your phone, and you then do the rest. The rest will mean on your own. You put in your account number, and it goes to your account. And it's going to some other areas other than just money transfer to bills payment and all, all the works. So the digital revolution is here. And really, banks just have to follow it. You know, successful digital strategies are expected to help banks sell more products effectively. But are they as effective for retention? Yes, they are. When ATM was introduced some years back, not so long, uh, it was essentially for paying money, I mean, to, for, for cash withdrawal. But today, on an ATM machine, you do a lot more than cash. Airtime vending, um, submitting your BVN, um, base payment, um, your cable payment you can do. So it's a lot more. So really, if it's just one item that you sell, maybe retention may be difficult. But what we do is we up the game, we provide more content, more value, and generally people just get stuck to it. And um, I, I, I don't see a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of people today can't find any other way to transfer money other than using their mobile. Uh, go with the days where you need to write uh, a letter to a bank, uh, help me transfer so much to what, so it's, um, it, people get addicted, <laughs> so to speak, uh, to this, and that help with, with retention. You know, industry players and analysts uh, have said that in the regulatory measures aimed at stabilizing the economy will make it difficult for banks to make higher profits this year or in the foreseeable future. Uh, this much was confirmed by you while well, speaking about your bank's uh, 2015 financial performance uh, when you said that, you know, it was a particularly challenging one. And, um, you know, all of these policies are impacting uh, activities. How much did these challenges affect results in the end of the uh, 2015 financial year? I think some of the measures uh, as re responses to what is going on in the economy. What we call provision for, for general provision on loans got increased from 1% to 2% last year. So if you were making provision, I mean, the, I mean surely that's a 100% increase. Um, meaning, this is provision on performing loan, loan portfolio. It used to be 1%. And I think the, 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 the why that came on board is the fact that the economy itself is challenged. Major part of the economy, and, um, oil and gas, prices of fuel, I mean petroleum products, uh, could have had has come down, declined, but thank God is looking slightly up today. In the power sector, um, a lot of loans were created in the power sector, but we also know that power really hasn't got it to the level that we want it. And if there's no power, um, ability to pay those loans on time, uh, they then become challenged. In reaction to that, CBN decided to up the game, up the provision for uh, performing loans from 1% to 2%. There's a whole lot of other regulations, really, that seem to want to streamline uh, the way we do our business, such that banks are safe and they can, they have shocks uh, to absorb, they have um, uh, something to absorb whatever the shock that the economy may bring generally. A strong economy will thrive on a strong financial system. The financial system is, uh, is in disarray. The whole economy certainly is uh, it's, uh, it's in disarray. And I think those regulations, honestly, they are, they are necessary. Yeah.